New York Times. He calls into question traditional U.S. alliances. Plus Hennigan with us and also Trump supporter and former Apprentice contestant Aaron Elmore. Ellis, let's start. Have you wanted more specifics from your candidate? I think they're starting to unfold and come out now, especially when it comes to foreign policy. And I agree with Mike. He is winning. He is getting the votes. And I think it's because America is ready for a change. They're tired of Washington politics as usual, and they see this fresh voice in Donald Trump, and it's really resonating with them, and he's getting the votes. So whatever he's doing is certainly working, so I think you just got to keep on watching and stay tuned. All right. Ellis, the Sox is negotiable policy, or do you think this is workable policy that people will go for? Well, I think people are going for it, and so far it hasn't hurt him at all. I think, you know, when he's spoke about some different diplomatic relations with Japan. I think those sound completely reasonable. My grandfather is a 95-year-old World War II veteran, and we just had an hour-long conversation about some of Donald Trump's international relations and foreign policy ideas. And you know what? They do sound sounds to be like they would be certainly good ideas. And if we think what's going on in the United States is working right now, clearly it's not. ISIS is a tremendous problem. It's only getting bigger. So we do need some sort of change and we need some sort of shakeup. So here we go. Real Maybe this is the shakeup that we need. Real quick, Ellis, when does this, here's some uh, new information, Donald Trump on ABC denying Ted Cruz's allegations that he had something to do with the story, in the National Enquirer that alleged Cruz had uh, the affairs. Here we go when we uh, was very passionate concerning this. Do you think this is is going to slow down and die out? Or do you think we're going to continue? I mean, it has to. It's just too boring already. Like, enough is enough with this. However, to say that Donald Trump is behind the National Enquirer is just ridiculous. Someone's had a little too much Easter candy, I think, yesterday. There you I mean, enough <laughs> is enough with that. And I have read in a few publications um, that they were saying some of Rubio's inner circle might have been responsible. But Trump has come out and said he is not responsible. The National Enquirer is you know, their own entity. And yeah, they're endorsing Trump, but Trump didn't plant this story. Like I said last week, listen, the National Enquirer is not exactly Newsweek, okay? We get that. However, they have broken some big stories regarding Tiger Woods and his infidelity, John Edwards and his infidelity, some things regarding O.J. Simpson. So the, the National Enquirer has, you know, sunk their teeth into a few stories that ended up to be really, really true, and they blew the lid off of those stories. So we shall she see what happens here. But to say that Donald Trump is responsible is just kind of a little bit silly. They've hit and missed on some for sure. So let's talk about, uh, Ellis, how the candidate... We'll wrap it up with that. Mike. We've coined a new <laughs> phrase. Aaron, Ellis, uh, good stuff there. I want to let everybody know, tomorrow night, the final three Republican candidates will all be in Milwaukee for a CNN town hall.